I wanted to try something a little bit different today. Now, Windows 11 is still a developer preview, but I wanted to see what we can actually do with it. Now, I'm an avid user of FL Studio, so I'm going to be installing FL Studio on this. I'm going to install a bunch of very popular VSTs to see what works, or at least what will install. And then I'm also going to be tweaking FL Studio with a theme and some splash icons that I changed around a little bit in Photoshop. So now this is going to be a customized version of FL Studio 20, running some of your most favorite VSTs on Windows 11. So the first thing I want to do here is just run Winver, and that's going to pull up the version here so you can see that we are on 22000.65, and this is Windows 11 Pro, and that's what we're going to be testing everything on today. So now the first thing we have to do is install FL Studio. Now the install process is going to be exactly the same across any version of Windows. There's nothing different here at all. The only things that we want to pay attention to is going to be the directories for the plugins. So this one right here, Program Files x86 VST Plugins, that's going to be for our 32-bit VSTs. So we have to remember that location. And then for the 64-bit ones, it's going to be Program Files Common Files VST2, and that's going to be for VST1 or VST2 plugins. For VST3 plugins, there will be another folder for VST3. And that's it. So the 32-bit ones go right here. The 64-bit VST1 or 2 plugins go here. And then VST3 go in the VST3 folder. So now that FL Studio is installed, we want to install some VSTs. So first I'm going to install ReFX Nexus. So we can click Next. Now right here where we want to install this to, I'm going to Browse. So now it automatically wanted to pick the x86 program folder. So this is a 32-bit plugin. Now in the 32-bit program files, we go down to VST Plugins, and that's where the 32-bit VST plugins are going to be installed. Okay. I'm not sure why they added that there, so that is a bug for Windows 11. For some reason it added another x86 folder. So that's all we want there, is Program Files x86 VST plugins. Now we're going to click Next, and now we only want the VST one, we don't want the RTAS version, because we're not going to be using that. So the VST version right here, Next, and that'll be the REFX folder, fine, and we can just install that. Now it's done. Now normally with Nexus you have to install a content folder, so we're going to go back to C, Program Files x86, we're going to go to VST Plugins, and now in here we're just going to paste the folder that comes with it. And now you can see that the Nexus content has been copied, and that's it. That's our first VST. Done. Now, another big name in VSTs is going to be Native Instruments Massive. So now Next, accept all the terms. We don't need the RTAS plugin. So now we only have the standalone application and the VST plugin. So now this destination right here doesn't matter because this is going to be for the standalone application itself. So we can just leave that right where it is, but we can see that it's program files, so that's a 64-bit plugin. But when we go next, right here we have the 32-bit VST and the 64-bit VST. Now we want to move these to where FL Studio is going to see them. So for the 32-bit one, we know that that is program files x86, and then down here to VST plugins. Now for the 64-bit one, change that, program files, common files, and then VST2. Next, and it's installing. And that's all there is to it. Now we can move on. Now another big player in the game right here is Serum. Now this one here, just like before, is going to be the same process. Now we're not using Pro Tools, and we'll just keep everything the way it is there. Destination folder, and this is going to be for the 32-bit one. So we know that that is this PC, local, x86, and we go down to VST plugins. Next, now it's asking for the 64-bit location. And again, we can browse this PC, local, program files, common files, and then VST2. That's it. Now, we can move on. Now, another great tool that I'm not a huge user of, but I do see a lot of tutorials and stuff on YouTube where people are using Isotope Ozone. So for this instance, I'm just showing you how to install it, because it, it does seem very common out there. I've just, I've never really gotten into it. But again, this one here is a 64-bit only VST, so we just install it to the program files common VST2. And now this one here, you can see it is a VST3 plugin, so we're going to install this VST plugin here, which is going to be a VST1 plugin, so that will enable in that folder, and the VST3 one would have to get moved to the VST3 folder. So now Isotope Ozone is installed, and we can move on. Super VHS is a great tool 
This one here would be for simulating that cassette tape vibe, very warm, low fidelity. And now because this one here is a 32-bit plugin, we can install that one in the VST plugins folder in the program files x86 folder, just like all the rest of them. And now for the 64-bit version, you can see that it is a VST2, so we're going to put it in Program Files, Common Files, and then VST2. Okay, moving on. Now what would Lo-Fi be without Valhalla Supermassive? This is probably the best reverb plugin that you can find, and it's free. So just like all the rest, we can install this one to the 64-bit VST folder. And this one also has a VST3, which it automatically picks the VST3 folder. And that's it. Now we can continue. And now we have Spitfire Audio Labs. Now, this is going to be one where we have to change the install directory to be the 32-bit VST's folder. And now next, and install. Now I got one more to install right here. That would be Antares Autotune Pro. Just like the rest, you can install that VST3, and it goes directly to the VST3 folder. And that's it. So now that everything is installed, we can finally open FL Studio. Now I want to go to Options, go to Manage Plugins. And now the plugin search paths, you can see right here that we have the 32-bit program files folder with the VST plugin, the VST2 folder, and the VST3 folder. What we want to do here is find more plugins. And now that's searching through all of those folders to find new ones to add. So right here we have Serum, we have Valhalla, ReFX Nexus, Native Instruments Massive, and then we have all of these by Isotope. Now like I said, I've never used this before. It's just really common and maybe it's good. I'm assuming it is because so many people use it, but for the price tag of $500 US, let's just say I borrowed this from my friend and I'm not gonna be using it because that's ridiculously expensive. And when I'm only using FL Studio for personal projects, I'm not making any money off of this, I can't justify spending that much money. So I'm not even gonna be testing those ones because I am going to be uninstalling it right after this. And now I'm going to go to Plugins, we can go to Installed, we can go to Effects, and right here under VST3, we have the VST3 effects. Now, these ones here, you'd be able to pick from the mixer. So, for instance, Super VHS or Valhalla, Super Massive, those seem to come up fine. Now, when we go to Generators, we can go to VST, and then here you can see that we have Massive, which comes up fine. ReFX Nexus comes up fine, and serum, uh, which I still have to enter my serial number. Actually, now that I think about it, I didn't even register FL Studio. Yeah, I haven't signed in yet, so it's still in trial mode. So for the most part right now, actually I think this is out of date as well. These are just the installers that I still had archived in the download folder, so I imagine some of these might actually be out of date. But from what we can see is that FL Studio installs fine, these VSTs, they install fine, the effects install fine, and everything seems to come up completely normal. So I'm going to play around with this for a bit, maybe throw something together, just to actually test and make sure that most of these work, but I won't bore you with that. So to keep things interesting, let's change this. So right now there's this icon right here. When we open FL Studio, there's the splash icon. Now you can see all the colors and everything. So first, what we're going to do is close that, and now we're going to be opening a tool called FL Skinner. Now, this is a gray area for whether or not you're actually allowed to do it, and the developer who made this program has taken down their GitHub, as well as every link in their Discord. But if you Google it, you can find it. So again, for personal use, I don't see this really being an issue. It's my program, I paid for it, I should be able to do what I want to it. They already got my money, why should they care? So now when you first open it, it's gonna ask for the directory to FL Studio. So program files, image line, FL Studio, and then FL64. Now, we can open the skins folder, and in here is where we're going to put our themes. So in this themes folder that we have open, we can paste. Now we can reopen FL Skinner, and you'll see that this theme comes up, LMS. Let's make music, so that's just kind of the vibe. Now I didn't fully write this, I took one that was currently made and then I just altered a whole bunch of things to try and get it as close to what I was going for. So now we can select this and we can create auto launch shortcut on desktop. And that's it, we can close this 
And now right here, when we launch this, it's going to launch the one with the color altering theme. But before we do that, I wanna change a few more things. We're gonna open a new window and we're gonna to go to the FL Studio folder. Now in the artwork folder, we're gonna to go to skins, default, and now we're gonna take this big fruit icon and we're going to delete that. And we're gonna take this title icon and delete that. And now I have other ones. Again, I found these online and then altered the colors on Photoshop. So I did not fully make these, I just modified them. And we're gonna paste those there. So now these have these bright green illuminating vents, which are going to match the theme very well. Now we're gonna go back to artwork, go to wallpapers, and we are going to paste this wallpaper in here. There we go, FL Studio wallpaper. So again, very minimalist, dark. I just found this somewhere on Google. It was on a few websites, so I have no idea who the original author was of that. So we can delete all these. And now when we open this, there is going to be one more step that we have to do still, but you'll at least be able to see the theme, the boot splash, and then we can look at the little floating icon in the about section. This area right here is where we want to change that wallpaper. So we go to view, go all the way down to background, and we just want to set an image as the background. And now in the wallpapers folder, we have it right here, and that's it. Now when we close this, we can reopen it. We have the boot splash, we have the wallpaper, and then in the about section, we have the smaller icon here that you can move around and everything, and everything is good. So now I'm just gonna register everything and go through all of my serial numbers and whatever. And I'm just gonna test out some of these VSTs to just put something together really quick so we can actually make sure that everything works. So I bet right about now you were expecting to see some kind of edit, or at least a song that I put together, right? Yeah, me too. That's kind of what I had planned. But remember that version of Isotope Ozone that I borrowed? from my friend. Yeah, short story long. Maybe don't borrow programs from your friend internet when the installer's in Russian and it completely takes over your entire computer with viruses because I get to wipe the entire computer down. <laughs> completely wiped out everything. It installed like 12 instances of something called ingest.exe and then there was another one called families like f-a-m-i-l-i-e-s so like that program was running and then the one that I found really comical was one that was called audis.exe because I have a bunch of audis so that was you know I just I really feel like I deserved that one. Anyway everything that was on the laptop I lost it all. I had to wipe it. There was no saving anything. So unfortunately that's all there is. But at least before all that went down, I could show you a few things and how to install stuff and how to customize FL Studio, which again is a gray area because ImageLine, they go after people for doing this stuff, but I paid for the program. Why am I not allowed to do what I want with it? That's like saying that if you buy FL Studio, you can only produce this genre of music. It just doesn't make sense to me. They're literally telling you what you can and can't do with the program. But unfortunately, all of those download links came down, but there's this thing called archive.com.org. I don't remember, but you can basically just look up old websites like that developer's GitHub and the download links still work because the files are still archived on GitHub servers. But you know, maybe you didn't hear that from me. Unfortunately though, I can't provide a link because it'll get taken down. And if the link doesn't get taken down, then this entire video gets taken down. So I'm not going to play any game of chance with that after what just happened to the computer, because now I have to redo everything. <laughs> so that's awesome. So um, like the video or dislike it, that's cool. If that's how you felt. Uh, subscribe, that's awesome, or don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.